The process of taking a photo does not end right after you hit the shutter button. There's much more that goes into it. Even back in the day when there was film, you still had to throw it into the dark room and make sure you did everything properly. Otherwise, you could screw it up very easily. Nowadays, there's a little more room for error, but with raw photos, you got a lot of room for error. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be talking about our raw photos and how you can use them in Affinity Photo. Now, I'm not an expert in editing photos. I know how to do the basic stuff. So I'm just gonna show you what Affinity Photo has to offer in the raw format menus. And then you guys can go ahead and move on to whatever extra stuff it has. I'm just gonna go over the basic stuff. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it, but I will show you some things. And I have two examples for you. One, a picture of me and two, a landscape photo to demonstrate how the highs and the lows, the darks and the lights, how they all are manipulated with this. So as you can see here, we have a picture of me attempting to be a model, which I'm failing miserably, probably. Uh, so the first thing that I usually do uh, before I touch any of the parameters is I crop it if it's, if it's needed to the parameters that I want to edit. Otherwise, I'm just editing useless space. So all this space here, uh, there's no need for it. All I'm going to do is cut out myself and use it for a thumbnail one day. So first up here, you have your exposure, which is basically how much is lit, how much of the composition is lit. So with a raw photo, you have a lot more manipulation of the photo in the sense of it won't fragment and it won't give you some digital like nonsense going on. I'm sure eventually if you go high enough, it will like if you go that high, it's pretty blown out, but it's not pixelated. So you got to find that happy medium of where it is. So right now I'm seeing like, look at my, well, I guess that would be my left forearm. Uh, if you're looking at this is on the right, my left forearm. If I go here, you see that that starts to overexpose a little bit. You got that shininess. Now trying to find that spot, like it's just a little below that. So let's go 0.6. And it's just starting to hint it. This is just me doing it. I, I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but that's just me. So the next step is the black point, which is basically the level of blackness that it has so the, all these black areas this this that's how deep it will go so if you increase it see it dips those dark areas a little lower and if you go a little bit the other way let's say minus two it starts to soften it up and starts to lighten it up a little bit i like to have those darks a little bit darker now it might look a little dark but there's a couple of things we can do later on that will fix that and your brightness is overall like just the brightness, very similar to the exposure, but a little bit different. So let's go one on that. Just get a little bit. Like I said, this is just a rough example and you get to play around with these a lot and you learn a lot by just doing this a lot. And knowing that this is okay will help with the next couple of steps. So next up, I like to do the contrast. So this softens it up and this like, detail it gives a little bit more like not detail but it gives it like some depth so i'm softening up and now the contrast a little bit more now the clarity is going to give you 100 percent more clarity and then it softens the image for this one in particular every image is different i like to have a little bit more clarity so let's go 12. I'm gonna skip the saturation and the vibrance because I do that last, because I like to get the white balance right first. But before that, let's do the shadows and the highlights. This is where we can fine tune those uh, first things we went over with the exposure and the black point. So I'm gonna bring the shadows down a little bit. You might not be able to see it that well, but it makes a little bit of a difference. When you're staring at it, you'll notice it. So now the highlights, you see that you want to, oh, there you go. Look at that. That's a prime example. 
See how it's losing that, that glossiness off of there? Now, when you're doing this, you don't want to go too crazy. So I'm going to say this is minus 15, let's say. And that's right at the point where that glossiness kind of goes away. Now, it softens up that glare. And just for an example, if you go too far, it's going to look really unnatural either way. So we have minus 20. So that's roughly how I want it. Now we're going to get our white balance. I like to get a little bit more tan, just a little bit. I don't want to be too disingenuous. <laughs> this looks a little magenta, so let's go 29. Let's see if it makes sure. And the problem is it goes a little too green. Start looking like the Hulk, like in my uh, one of my thumbnails I just put out. But now the saturation, and everyone knows what saturation is, just brings out the colors a little more. Vibrance is very similar to that. I usually like to go double on the vibrance than the saturation because it's not as harsh. Saturation, if you go too crazy, it's going to look wonky like that. So let's go back to five. And sometimes using those extremes are very helpful because you can understand, oh, this is too much. But then if I bring it back, it looks right. If you're just sticking with these small parameters, you might not notice the difference. So play around with it. And then the, the vibrance here, maybe go with the 15 a little bit more. It's very subtle with the shirt. You notice it with the shirt and you notice it with the blue in the background. Like I said, the blue in the background is going to be cut out anyway. But it's nice to have. Now, after that, if you need to, you could go back to here and you could try to manipulate a little more. So I think I like a little bit more magenta and we go a little bit more back to that 4850. Yeah, it looks a little better now. And of course, you could always go back to these other ones and manipulate them further. There's profiles you can add, but I don't really use those. I like to use each one specifically you could also save these parameters so if you go here add preset you could do that as well and you could save it so if you're doing like a bunch of photos that are similar you can set a template so like if you like the way that it exposed the black point in this you could save those specifically before you even touch these then add it and then you could do a kind of like if like, like for example the next thing we're going to do is some landscape stuff so it's a good example to show you the presets. So let's get into that one. But before we do that, all you got to do now is develop. All right. So now you're developed and it's in the editing section. Now, if you're interested in me doing editing like this, like I said, I'm not an expert at this stuff, but I do have some experience. Let me know down in the comments and I could do a follow up video. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into another raw image. And you know a raw image by this. This has your CR2 or CR3. Now, depending on uh, your camera, this will determine what that is. I use Canon, so on my 77D, it's CR2. On my 90D, it's CR3. So just keep that in mind. Here is a picture that I took when I was up in Belfast, Maine. I spent a lot of time in Maine. And uh, I really like this picture. But it's a good example of having dark areas and light areas and showing how raw images can be manipulated. So, like I said, let's do that preset thing, but we're going to do certain uh, manipulations to say like, oh, I got a bunch of these pictures that are very similar, the same landscape. So for me, I like to take a bunch of pictures in the same area, but I don't want to edit the same thing over and over again. If I like the exposure, of course, you could change it at, at further, but let's get the exposure first. So I like, see, you don't want to go too far. It starts to blow out the sky. Usually for me, I like to edit to the lights. So get that to a point where, let's see, 0.4. Is 0.4 too much? Yeah, it's start, those clouds are starting to be lost. 0.3 is probably as far as I want to go. Now the black point, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how it affects it. See, right now, I'm not really sure how it's going to affect it. Ooh, I like that. Dark, making that sand a little darker. Let's go two on that. Yeah, I like the way that looks with that there. Maybe we could go 0.35. Yeah, it's nice. I like the way this looks so far. Now we can see if the brightness makes much of a difference. Now it's starting to soften it. 
It's either too dark or too light. But we go negative one. That works. Now, if you want to save this, you add the preset and you're going to name it. And what that's going to do, let's name this mooring. I'm going to, I'm horrible at spelling mooring. I think that's how you spell it. I should know this. I was a sailor at one point. I still am, but not much right now. Um, uh, beach chain. I name things really weird. Uh, exposure preset. Wow, that's a really bad name. Never mind. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Now, anytime that you bring something out, uh, here's a land. There's a bunch of them that I've had, but uh, this is the one. And this is just presetting these, this whole thing, because I didn't affect anything else. Now we're going to move on to the other things, just like we did before. And I'm not going to bore you with it, so let's uh, just skip ahead and see how it comes out. Okay, so we have the photo pretty much done the way I want it. And you can see that the saturation and the vibrance definitely made those blues pop, made the orange here pop. And I really like the way this came out. I also mess with the highlights a little bit. If you notice here, I got this negative 25, which then I brought the exposure up to 0.5, which was at 0.3 before. So it brought this sky. I didn't like the way the sky looked in comparison to this. So the sky was right, but this wasn't. Uh, well, actually, it all wasn't right. But I just wanted to make the photo a little brighter because it was saturated, but it wasn't bright enough. So... Had to bring some color into it, had bring some light into it uh, to make those colors not pop as much. But then uh, I decided that I wanted to lower the highlights here. That will bring the colors a little more back together. Otherwise, it looks really saturated. And this kind of like dulls that saturation a little bit. I like the level of the saturation, but I didn't want to be overwhelmed with it. So by doing that, it was changed. So like I said, you got your presets here and then you're going to develop. And that's all I got for you today. That is how you edit a raw image in Affinity Photo. Now, there are plenty of ways to do this. There are a ton of different manipulations you could do with it. And like I said, if you want me to go further in the next step of editing, this obviously is not the end for editing. There's plenty of more things that you could do. Now, I try to get it as close as I can first when I shoot it. Then when I do the raw image, I try to get it. So the less you do each step of the way like you want to do the most in the first step or two in your shot and in the raw image after that maybe a little less because then it starts to look a little fake unless you're looking for a specific style in which case have fun with it same thing applies when you're working with audio or video or any type of video or whatever it is you try to get the close to the closest the way you want it before there are exceptions there are 32-bit float files. There are 96 kilohertz for a sample rate. There is raw video. But you try to get it as close as you can so you have less work on the back end and it looks more natural and saves you a lot of time and effort on the back end. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you like this style of video, if you like this kind of uh, different tutorial stuff I have here, let me know down in the comments. I would really appreciate it if you guys let me know your opinions on this, good or bad. Just if you're not a fan of this, be constructive. Don't be rude. That's all I ask. And if you like the video in general, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing for more videos like this, more mic reviews, more tech related things. And I am always taking suggestions, so please leave them down in the comments. Uh, the community tab is open now, so uh, if you are interested in some BTS stuff, I'm building a computer, so I'll be showing some BTS stuff of that. So that'll be fun, and a video is going to be coming out based on that as well. One more thing, streams are Monday until the end of the year, at least uh, 2021, so if you're watching this in 2022, just keep an eye out for the community tab or maybe a video that I put out in the future. And that's it. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> come on, come on, Chara. There you go. Swift like lightning, like Dick Grayson. Agile, agile child. <laughs>